If a full-time eBay seller started from scratch, what would they do differently compared to an inexperienced beginner? And how quickly could they actually grow it? Well, I've been a full-time eBay seller for the past three and a half years. And yesterday, I created my brand new eBay account and started listing up my very first items for sale. The rules of this challenge are simple. I have 90 days to generate $5,000 worth of sales. Today's day two, we've got a lot to do. Right, so in episode one, I showed you guys my game plan. I wanted to start off with a store starter and I was able to do that last episode. We're able to find $700 worth of stock. That is now live in the store. But what I need to do now for the rest of week one, I need to go out and find another $700. And I'm gonna sporadically list that out over the course of the next seven days to hopefully achieve our goal of $250 in sales for week one. <laughs> I started this little thrift trip off very, very well with these Nike TNs. Uh, look, these are the breads and uh, I like the size, I like the condition and I also like the price. At just $15, they should go into some very, very good money. I'm gonna probably list these up for about $90 to $100, maybe even a little bit more, we'll see. These ones as well, a pair of Hoka running shoes, uh, a size eight and a half women's. I'm pretty confident with these, even though they don't have their insoles. I'm just gonna stipulate that in the description. And then we've got these Bally shoes, which were a bit of a 50-50. In the end, I ended up passing, but the comps on eBay for this brand were actually quite strong. Uh, I found some footy boots in another store as well. I've sold these before. They're not a big heavy hitter. They're only about a $35 shoe, but for $6 in, in store, footy season coming up, thought that was good. So not too bad this morning. We did pretty well with those items, but I actually just spied um, in the glass cabinet at the checkout a couple of extras. We've got this one here, which is a Casio watch. I don't do a lot of watches, but I'm interested to see how this is gonna go. The model number on the back, which is always important to look at, 3198AE1000W. Put some comps up on eBay from uh, what I saw, and I think it's about 40 to $45 for this thing. So be very interested to see how that goes. And then the other one as well, I found a book that was signed by Cameron Smith, and the signed copy was apparently going for about 40 to $45. So we'll list that up for about $35. Bucks. Um, might be a slow mover. The sell-through rate wasn't crazy on it. Um, but yeah, 10 into 35, we are playing a revenue game. Uh, I'll take 35 to $40 a piece for those two extras. Uh, so a couple more items. We still need a few more to hit our 700 bucks for the week, but at least it's a pretty good start. Now we are at the end of day two and unfortunately we don't have any sales, um, but I'm not too frustrated by that because I say it all the time on this channel, you really need to be persistent with just listing up quality items for an extended period of time. So I'm not really gonna to be too stressed about the figures. I'm not gonna be looking too heavily into the numbers at this stage. Um, we can play around with things in a few weeks if things are still slow, but two days in, about to wrap things up for today. No new sales. Just a cutie. Well, it might have taken three days, but we finally have our first sale, a pair of football boots. Now, a couple of really interesting things about this sale. Firstly, it's an international sale. It's actually off to Miami in the USA. We obviously got a $40 sale price for the shoes, but we also got postage of $39.75. eBay also takes a sales tax. Um, we don't receive that $5.58, um, but eBay collects that for themselves. So it worked out to a total order value of $85.33. When we break it down, uh, the fees for eBay works out to $11.51. The postage is $30.81. I shipped it off using my Australia Post Band 5 discount in the main store. It gave me about an $8 discount that we get to keep as profit. So that was pretty cool. And then the cost of goods, interestingly enough, it was my most expensive purchase on day one. Um, which is something that when I first started selling on eBay, I never really like, I didn't want to spend too much money on the goods that I was purchasing. Um, just so happens that obviously the most expensive one this time around 
uh, is the first item to go on to sell. And international shipping, I never turned international shipping on for 12 to 18 months into selling for the very first time. And yet it's the first thing that I turn on when I list up an item, um, you know, this time around starting from scratch. So really, really interesting to see the data around this sale. Uh, but the net profit obviously $17.43, purchasing it for 20, we almost, we almost doubled our money. But that's awesome. We've got about 80 odd dollars to put towards our 5,000. We're underway. First sale is out the door. Let's hope there's plenty more to come. Just like that, we made it to Sydney. Here we are, Sydney, Australia. We're on Bondi Beach right now. Um, and we've just had a bit of a GPS on some nearby thrift stores, and there's three. Just, just, oh shit, just up the top there. Um, so we're gonna go and check out all the touristy stuff around Bondi Beach, and then uh, go and see if we can find one or two items to bring back on our carry-on. I think we've only got like a kilo. Not much. Not much. There's not much in there. Not much to, uh, to play with, but I, I still think we can find maybe a Game Boy game, or I don't know, something light that's gonna be worth a bit of money for our, uh, our startup store mission that we're on, so. Yeah, I'll show you guys a bit of Bondi and then we'll um, do some thrifting. Is this wayside? Yeah, it is. Like new shoes though, they're like yeah. clean new. They're brand new. Yeah. See these are great. So these these wedges, they've actually got a wedge platform. Oh, yeah, okay. So it's chick's shoes, wedge, Nike dunk. Is that 20? Yeah. That's cock. I actually might do that. So I reckon these could be a win guys. We've got some Nike, we've got the dunk wedges. Um, sold these a few times before for about 100 bucks. So the fact that they're in this store for $20 is a little bit baffling. Um, I actually thought that'd be a whole lot more than 20 bucks. So even though we've got limited carry on, 20 into 100, I think that might be worth the trip. Hey Paulie, some Kayanos. Yeah, oh, we can scan it up and have a look. Well, that's only 20 on them. Four bucks on some video games, 2K20. A little bit worn, those shoes. Oh, then I saw, oh, what are they? Oh, Supras are great, 25 bucks. And then you got these, the TNs for 30. Could be the second pair of TNs in this series. I think it's just the size is a little bit small. They're a women's eight and a half. $30 TNs. All right, so we actually had some success. Vinny's Bondi Beach. I ended up going with the TNs. Um, those wedges were equally as good uh, in the other store, but I did leave them behind. I think I'm just gonna take the one pair of shoes back um, with what we've got to play with on luggage. But these TNs, they should go for about 100 bucks. I might list them up for 120. The reason I went with them over the wedges was because of the size. Size is so important. Um, and an eight and a half in women's versus a seven in women's with those wedges. I just think we'll get a better sell through rate on these TNs. So that's my justification. Condition's still pretty good as well. Um, yeah, what was it, 30? Heavy spend on a pair of shoes, but that's Bondi Beach for you. Just wanted to buy something while I was here. The main reason why we were in Sydney though was to catch Blink-182, my all time favorite band. After 20 years, it was cool to see them live. Thanks for a fun weekend, Paulie. Mate, Let's get back to the Goldie. After a whirlwind 24 hours in Sydney, we were back home on the Gold Coast and it was time to head out to the Sunday morning flea market. I love this place. You can always find great items to flip for a profit on eBay. Carrara Markets on the Gold Coast. I found some Carhartt tees that'll go on to do well, but I'm putting this one into the second store. The Nike uh, Sky High Dunks. Uh, I should get about 80 to to $100 on these. They were in great condition. The size not too bad either. Went out and did some thrifting afterwards because we still need on here on day 
day five, we still need to hit our $700. I've got some Nike MX Thiers there. They were going for some pretty decent money. And I've got some diesel jeans here as well. So a very, very good sell-through rate on the Wakey. Um, also the size, 34 waist, 32 length is awesome. And everything was in really good condition. So I was pumped with that. Um, this book series as well was going for about 38 or so dollars. But in the end, I pulled it back because the sell-through rate was terrible and it wasn't worth the spend. This is a huge Bolo brand for you guys to be looking out for. Chippo and Bax, um, $18 in store, 36 waist, 34 length, slim fit. Thanks very much. And we've also got some more jeans for $8, the 312 shapings. They should go for about 35 Game of Thrones, you can get about 60 bucks for this. So I'm going to go ahead and pay $25. Um, that's pretty much got us to where we need to be for our budget. Well, what a relief that was. Our second sale has come through. The Hokers that we bought just a couple of days ago, netting us a profit of $12.79. How good. All right, guys, we have made it to the end of our very first week with our brand new eBay account. And I wanted to pull the numbers up here and just show you guys how the numbers turned out. I mean, there's not really a lot to report here because I've only made the two sales, but I do want to show you this on a weekly basis. Um, so I've pulled up the, uh, the dates here for the first week We've done $125 worth of total sales. Now we wanted to do $250, but like I said at the start of the video, I'm not too concerned about the sales and $250 in the first week might have been a little bit optimistic, but that's okay. I think we can catch up on it later in the, in the, in the 13 weeks that we're doing this for. I'm not too concerned. I'm very happy that we haven't had to boost our promoted listings to get those two sales. We're still at a 15%, um, I guess, total uh, expensive fees and that's fine my main store sits at about 15 percent, and i do three percent on that store all the time so that's good uh two sales and then the the other thing that i really like is we've got the average sale price up into the 60 dollars, and that's because we're saying no to all the cheap stuff when we're out and about sourcing and we're only focusing on those high ticket stuff that's going to bring in a, a good amount of profit um, and to get a good amount of profit you need a good average sale price so 62 dollars, absolutely loving that um, not a lot more to show you there. Um, I will just quickly show you the traffic sources as well to let you know what sort of traffic is coming through for me uh, to allow these two sales to come in. All right, so having a look at the numbers here, we've had 84,000 impressions, which means 84,000 times our listings have been shown and we've been able to receive 749 page views as a result of that, which turns into two sales. So the percentages there, 0.9% worth of a click-through rate and then a 0.3% uh, average sales conversion rate. Now in my main store, I sit at about 0.2%. Uh, so 0.3 for the start for our first week is kind of exactly what I was thinking we were gonna get. Um, when you have a look at the promoted versus organic impressions, half of the impressions are actually coming from promoted listings and we're promoting at only 3% and already half of our volume is coming in by a promoter. That's why it's just such an important thing to do. Um, you just get seen by so many more people when you just add a little bit of percent uh, to promoted listings. Um, if we have a look at the impressions, it's slowly grown over the first few days. It just escalated and got bigger and bigger. And then we kind of flatlined a little bit there as well. Um, so hopefully that continues to grow. Um, the page views, you'll see here that there was quite a large spike in day one and two. That was me publishing the video last week. And a lot of you guys jumped in and started to play around with the listings. And I actually think that's more of a hindrance than an advantage to the store because none of you guys are buying anything when you're going in for a look. You're just going in and you're window shopping. You're just checking my titles, my photos, the condition of my items, uh, but you're not actually taking any purchases. We've only had two sales and that ultimately hinders my click-through rate and it also hinders uh, my average sales conversion rate. So it's actually, everyone says, you know, you, you, you're benefiting from having an exposure through the YouTube channel. It's actually a hindrance based on these statistics that you can see right here. Um, quantity sold, there it is there. We had one organic sale and one promoted sale. So a little bit of traffic data that we will continue to pay attention to uh, over the next few weeks, but I'm wrapped. We've got two sales underway. I've got a bunch of really good items in store now listed, ready to go for week two. Uh, things are moving along, I guess, as expected. Now guys, if you wanna get started selling on eBay, I highly recommend this video right here. It's a how-to beginner's guide. It teaches you absolutely everything from a technical sense of selling on eBay. Hopefully you've enjoyed this one, guys. We'll catch you in the next app.